Thank you so much for having me. How are you all doing today? Great. Well, so now I want you to think about a significant memory in your life. It could be a graduation, a birthday party, or the first time you think about someone or have met someone very special in your life. You now probably have that memory in your head, the sights, the sounds, the memory of that person and the emotions that you felt. This is the level of intricacy and complexity of human cognition, the complicated brain that we have, and that many think that artificial intelligence or AI is trying to replicate. AI has been an interesting topic for cognitive psychologists, computer scientists, and engineers ever since the computer was created in the 1940s. The computer was created in the 1940s during World War II to aid in the effort of the war. And during that time, a lot of women served as human computers, helping with ballistic calculations. The electronic computer greatly increased their efficiency. Fast forward to today, the computer is still helping us, making our lives more efficient. And truly, it's designed by humans for humans. We're moving into an era that is truly exciting. It's almost like a new renaissance, because technological advances are going on so quickly and so rapidly in our lives, and it's really transforming our lives. It's much like the renaissance, where art, music, culture, and science came together and made a profound transformation in our society. Today, the AI transformation is also doing the same. It's bringing together many diverse fields, such as psychology and neuroscience, computer science, engineering, social sciences, the arts, and the humanities. And in fact, humanism was a core mission of the Renaissance period. And in very similar ways, human-centered principles, humanism, is still the most important topic within this AI advancement that we're talking about today. So how do we do this? How do we truly innovate for human efficiency and human use? Well, one of the keys lies in understanding human cognition. Cognitive psychology is the study of hidden mental processes, such as attention. You're paying attention to me right now, or perhaps you're mind wandering, which is also healthy, that is okay. But that process is important to study, and in fact, very important to understand if we truly want to innovate for humans with different abilities and different needs. We also study perception. How is it possible that we may all be looking at the same object, but have completely different interpretation of that object? Human sensation and perception processes are complex and very individualized. So to truly innovate for humans, we need to take those topics into account. We also study memory. So just now, I had to do a really simple exercise of recalling a memory from your life. That was quick and something that you could do really easily, which is somewhat different from the memory that is on your computer or your phone, right? So understanding this human memory system will allow us to make breakthroughs in education, healthcare, and beyond. Think about the ability to create new memory aids for older adults, or to create treatments for medical um, illnesses such as Alzheimer's disease that currently don't have cures. That would be amazing. We also study human intelligence, which is vastly different from artificial intelligence. Human intelligence is multifaceted, very complicated, and still the most highly debated topic within cognition. It's hard to define it. While artificial intelligence is something that we created as a tool to help us work better and faster. So understanding the difference between the two would allow us to continue to embrace the tool that we created for human use and to be not so threatened by it. We also study language. Language is the interaction between linguistic symbols and culture. 
understanding those topics would allow us to continue to innovate for more people around the world, more diverse audiences, and more diverse needs. And then ultimately, we also have the study of thinking, problem solving, and decision making. These are higher cognitive functions that make us uniquely human. Something as simple as the weather could affect how you make decisions. So taking into these situational factors into account would allow us to continue to innovate for human and truly putting human-centered principles at the forefront. So at this time, the discussion of responsible usage and development of AI is truly prominent in academia, in industry, and perhaps everyday conversations. Great power comes with great responsibilities. We need to put human-centered principles in mind when we continue to innovate in AI. If not, biases will occur. We, as human beings, are implicitly biased. We sometimes make decisions using mental shortcuts called heuristics, which could lead to discrimination, biases, and stereotypes. Our society also calls for a reform as to who makes decisions at the very top of the ladder in, le in leadership. As long as there are inequities in our workforce and leadership, there will continue to be biases in our innovations. So in a study that I have done over the past 15 years in my cognitive aging lab, I have realized that culture is yet another topic that we need to take into account as we continue to think about innovations in AI. In a study that was conducted around the world, we showed young and older participants simple pictures of items and objects and asked them to rate them for valence. Is this a picture of a positive, negative, or neutral item? Many of you in this room would probably say it's a positive picture. And in fact, when you type celebration into your computer, you would find emojis of champagne glasses. So in the Western world, such as the US, UK, and Canada, we found that participants rated this picture as positive, and they also remembered this picture as a positive picture. We then replicated the study in Afghanistan. And we found that participants rated pictures like this as a negative picture because alcohol is banned in the country. So this exercise tells us that it's almost impossible for us to design one system for all. When we continue to innovate, we need to keep culture and individualistic factors in mind. We need to think about cognitive science and the theories that we have created based on the experiments that we have done as we continue to innovate for humankind. So looking forward, we know that cognitive science and technology will continue to, to intertwine to make breakthroughs that we can hardly imagine today. But one thing that you can do today is to continue to use your human superpowers, emotional intelligence. You can empathize with people around you and put yourself in another person's shoes. This is the best way, and in fact, the most effective way to decrease biases, discrimination, and stereotypes. You can also cultivate gratitude and carry out an act of kindness whenever you want. So my take home message for you today is very straightforward. Try to take another person's perspective from a different culture and carry out an act of kindness because you are the future of our world. Thank you so much.